let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some praise. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. So I just want everybody to just repeat after me and say hallelujah. Come on, lift your hand and say hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But he's a man of his word. How many know that God cannot turn his word void? Amen? Amen. Amen. He's a man that cannot lie. So look at somebody and point to them and say, if he said it, you can believe it. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands with us. Come on. Oh, hey, says, all things are possible when we believe all chains are breakable when we receive Yahweh he keeps his promises Woo! if he said it we'll believe it if he said it hey come on if he said it we believe it oh oh oh, oh. if he said it we believe it you're a man, say, you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Come on, give it to me. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. You're a man, say, you're a man. Let me say it one more time. Oh, all things are possible when we believe all chains are breakable when we receive Yahweh he'll keep his promises if he said it we believe it if he said it yeah alright alright oh, oh, oh. if he said it we believe it oh know that God has said something to you? Has he promised some things to you and your family? When you're on your knees praying, has God ever said something over your head? Has there ever been prophecies spoken over your head? And how many know that you want to see that those things manifest? Amen? So if you want those things to manifest, I want you to give God the best praise that he deserves. And let's say it one more time and come and sing it. Oh, if you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Woo, come on and say it. This is our confidence. You'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. Listen, he's patient in every step. He's patient in every heartache. God, you'll never fail. You, one more time, one more time, listen. You're patient in every step. Think about it. Yeah. Present in every heartache. Say, God, you will never fail. You won't start with me. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, 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 oh, hey. If you said it, we believe it. That he'll finish what he started. God, you have never failed. You won't stop. Y'all believe it? I said, 
about you but that's a word for today if you said it we believe it you're a man you're a man of your word if you said it we believe it come on lift your hands and say it one time in the atmosphere no matter what it looks like no matter how you feel you got to tell the devil if God says it if we said it we believe it you're a man of your word. Come on and give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and worship a holy God. Hallelujah. If you said it, we believe it. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. Come on and give God some praise in here. If God has done something for you, you ought to give him the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Bible says those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I don't know about you, but has God been true and real to you in your life? Hallelujah. In spite of a pandemic, in spite of the racism, in spite of the isms and the schisms, God has been consistent and true in my life. So every time I come and step foot in Inspiration Church, I come with an agenda. How many came with an agenda to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. So we magnify your name. Hallelujah. How many of victory belongs to Jesus? Come on, if you could just throw your hands up like this and say victory belongs to him. Hallelujah. This song blesses me every time I hear it because whatever I'm going through, I know that victory belongs to God. stand against the Lord. No one can. No one will. Oh, who can stand against the King? No one can. No one will. Oh, Jesus, 
victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? Nobody can. No one. Think about can. it. No one we. Said who can stand? Who can stand against? Oh, nobody can. No one can. No one will. No one can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, victory belongs. Victory belongs to you. I don't care what you're going through right now. Just know. Hey, yeah. So we put our trust in you, Lord, and we put our hope in you, because you will deliver. You're a provider. You're a provider. I find victory. I find my victory. My victory. your hands. Come on. Oh, sometimes you don't know what to say. Victory belongs to Jesus. With every oh and every groan, he knows exactly what you need. So let's try it. Say, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. It simply says, victory belongs to you victory belongs to you victory belongs belongs to you say victory belongs to you come on Smith Sparkle Oh, 
Hallelujah. Tony, tell him how much victory belongs. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Aren't you glad about it? Give God some praise. Victory belongs to you. Come on, Danica, take us home and say victory. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Come on, everybody, help us say. Victory belongs, victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. I want to give God some praise right there if you know that victory belongs to him. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Yes. Victory today is mine. Turn me on, 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 turn me on. Yes, God, yes, God. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Yes, God. I told Satan that you can't be behind. Yes. Joy today is mine. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Father. You're worthy, God. You just raise your hands in this building. Just raise, say he's worthy. Let me hear that out of your mouth. Say he's worthy. See, you can't praise God. The person next to you can't praise God the way that you can. Say, he's worthy to me. See, what has happened is that we've gone through transitions in church history. And in our transitions in church history, we have left worship to the entertainment of worship. We give Grammys and we give awards to worship songs. But there's only one person that can give an award to a worship song, and that's him because it's his song. And so this morning, if you can just say victory, not y'all, not y'all, say victory. No music, no music, no music, no music, no music, all voices. Say victory. Say victory. Say victory. Now hold your hands up and say victory is mine, thus says the Lord. Victory is mine, thus says the Lord. And say, we give you all glory, all honor, all praise. We give you, point to him, say, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. And guess what? No music. It's not based on how I feel. It's not based on your personality. It's not based on what state of mind you're in. It's based on him because he created you to worship him 
And he said, if you don't guess what the rocks are already doing it, but how much greater would it be if you give God glory? For just about 10 seconds, let's just give God glory. If you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah, man. Come on back in and let's change the atmosphere in your home, in the community, in your life to know that addictions are being broken in your praise. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you that you're worthy. We didn't come for entertainment. Somebody make that declaration. We didn't come for entertainment. We didn't come based on the song selection. Say, we didn't come. We didn't come based on who's singing. Because we came to give you glory. We came to worship you in our spirit and in our truth we worship God ain't God good part of our church history would be like uh, God is good and all the time 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 God is good, and all the time. God is good, all the time. God is good, and all the time. So it doesn't matter what's happening in your life right now, you can remember that, and all the time. I feel good this morning, anybody else feel good? You feel good, you feel good. Put your hands together if you feel good. Just give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Woo! I have been working on this message before the choir leaves, before they leave. I've been working on this message, and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it is going to change the trajectory of your spiritual life, which is then going to set your personal life on track and on course for where God is leading. I need you to just start praying where you are. Just close your eyes and just start praying. Say, God, I need a word. I need you to speak to me where I am. Say it out loud. Don't know internally do it. Say it behind your mask. Give them a mask prayer. Tell them nobody can see your lips. They don't know what you're saying. But Father, say, Father, I need, I need some help in some areas. Uh, I've got some areas that are, that are messed up, some areas that need to be uh, synchronized with the life of my spirit. Father, I want to do good. I want to do good, God. But I know that every time I do good, evil is always present, Father, but I'm praying for that I don't focus on the evil, but I focus on the good. God, give me direction and focus this morning so that I can hear from you and then I can know exactly where you're calling me to go. Father, forgive us this morning. Put forgiveness in our hearts so that we can transcend, Father, the, the blockades, God, and the walls and the barriers, Father, that are around me. Father, I've had a bad attitude for all week because there are some barriers that are blocking my heart. Father, I'm asking you to loose and remove those things today so that love can penetrate my heart today. I need to be able to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost on the inside today. Give me clear direction, Father. I want clarity of mind. I want peace in my heart. I want forgiveness to live. But your word says that how can I forgive you if you haven't forgiven others today, right now, you're forgiving your father, you're forgiving your mother, you're forgiving best friends, you're forgiving your wife, you're forgiving your husband, you're forgiving your children, you're forgiving your boss, all of those people that meant you harm, all of those people that harmed you but didn't mean you harm, I'm releasing it today. Make me a fresh conduit of love so that your spirit can speak in and through me. Father, I thank you. I thank you. As a church, say thank you. We thank you. That we can worship you. In spirit. In spirit. And. Somebody say truth. And guess what? The truth shall make you free. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning as you take your seats. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all for an awesome job this morning. Can anybody feel them? Anybody feel them? Just raise your hand if you feel them. If you feel them, just raise your hand. If you, if you feel them, 
We only got two people that feel them. A bunch of people don't feel them. I pray that you get the feeling before you leave. I pray that you get it before you leave so that you can know that God is in this place. Last week, we had a, a phrase that we kept saying over and over, and it was an individual thing that we said, and we talked about being marked. Anybody remember what we said last week? We said, I am. Say it again. Say, I am marked. That's what we said last night. We said, I am marked. This week, I want you guys to repeat after me. We are marked. Tell your child, if you got a child next to you, say, we are. We are marked. Last week, we, we talked about an individualized uh, a segment of, of life, and we talked about an individual process, and we talked about the individuality of, of who God is, and we talked about who God means to me. But how many of us know that God didn't come just for me, but he came for us. He's coming for his church. He's coming back for the people that are, are called by his name. And so when he comes for us, he comes in a we format. When, when the Holy Spirit dropped down in the book of Acts, he dropped down not to a person, but to a conglomerate of people. And it says that people were saved and salvation came unto them because it came to a we people. Say, I'm a we people. How many know that, that God doesn't just want to bless you, but he wants to bless y'all? Yeah, country. He wants to bless y'all. He wants to he wants to bless us. He wants to bless all of us in the house. And the Bible talks about the order in the household. He says, I want to bless the man first. And then after I bless the man, it's going to fall throughout the family. It's going to fall uh, throughout 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 uh, 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 my blood and my, my offsprings. And then it's going to go from generation to generation to generation. And we see that we know that in the blessing of Abraham, that's a a generational praise. That's a generational blessing. That's a, a top-down thing. God says, I'm going to anoint you so that the generations can be anointed. How many of you know that you are part of them generations? I am a part of the generational. I don't care how cursed or what your parents passed down to you or what your grandparents passed down to you. How many of you know that you are the result of a generational blessing? And you are a curse reverser. Say, so I'm a curse reverser. When you go to work tomorrow, school tomorrow, virtual, say, so I'm a curse reverser. And whatever they, and when they don't know what that is, you can tell them that whatever the curses that are in my house or in my family, in my community, or on my job, I come to reverse the curse. We used to have a culture where I would cuss you out, but I'm going to reverse the curse. When you curse me, I'm going to bless you. Where I shouldn't forgive you because you didn't forgive me, I'm going to reverse the curse and I'm going to forgive you. where you thought about the Old Testament eye for an eye, and there was an eye for me and an eye for you. I'm, I'm reversing that no longer. It's going to be an eye for me and an eye for you. But I'm going to let that one pass. We're going to learn how to let some stuff slide. Amen? Cha-cha slide. We're going to let some stuff slide on out of our lives so that we can move in the unction of God. Father God, I pray that you give me grace in this place. I pray that you give me a word for today. Pray that you heal a heart, mend everything. Father, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are marked. We are marked. We are marked. If you have your Bibles, if you don't, if you have your phones, we're going to be going through the book of Revelations. This is a Revelations uh, a, a sermon series. Now, what I want you to know, if this is your first time joining in, you got to go check out the part one. Because if you don't understand part one, it's going to be difficult for you to understand part two. But last week, we talked about you being marked. And when I say that I am marked, I'm saying that the things that are going on in Revelations, if I understand who is whose I am, who I'm covered by, and who, who has me in his hand, then I can definitely understand that I don't have to be scared when I read the Word of God. Yeah, there are going to be some things in here and some seals that are going to be open, and there's going to be uh, some people that die, and there's going to be some heartaches, and there's going to be some famines, there's going to be some curses, but when you are marked, God is saying, I'm going to save you from those things. And so it's imperative that you get the mark. Make sure your kids have the mark. Make sure your neighbor's kids have the mark. Make sure that mark, and that mark is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because when we're marked, we're saying that I have been adopted into the body of faith. And since I am a part of this body, there are some perks in the midst of persecution. Say that with me. Perks in the midst of persecution. 
that are going to, to guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. So there are, there's a graphic that's going to come up on the screen, and it talks about the seven churches. How many churches are there? Seven. There's seven churches when we look at the beginning of uh, Revelations. And I want you guys to look. We're going to be paying attention closely to Revelations 2 and 3 for uh, emphasis for today. And, and in Revelations, which was written by the Apostle John uh, in the island of Patmos, Apostle John, who wrote it in the island of Patmos, God was giving him revelation. He was dropping things in his spirit. And many people say that they uh, they read Revelations. It's, it's a, one of those books that's in code, but it's really not. It's actually talking about a church and churches that were on the planet when John was writing this, but it was also giving a future story about what church would look like. And so they talked about how many churches were there? Seven churches. The first church is called Ephesus. Say Ephesus. Ephesus is alive during the time of John, and John is alive during this time. Uh, this is the first century church, meaning that when we talk about 2,000 years ago, you, you've been in church and they say, well, over 2,000 years ago. That's my hooping voice because I don't really have one. But when you talk about over 2,000 years ago, we're talking about A.D. We're talking about right after uh, Jesus had left. We're talking about the first century church, 30 A.D. Uh, there was a group or a church that was present. Now, if you look at this map, go back Back to that map for me for just a second. If you look at this map that's uh, coming on the screen, you'll see that all of these churches that we're speaking to are going to be, I got it on here, I need it up here on the screen. You don't have it? You don't have it? It's, I, I put it there. Okay, well don't worry about it. I can pull it from right here. Um, and Cynthia has it back there. I, wanna, I, I want them to be able to see this, so they have to be able to see it. So if we look here, and you probably can't see this, but if you're online and you can see this, uh, then this right here, it, it, it shows where the seven churches are around Asia. Y'all can see that? Anybody can see that? I can hold this up. This is your, your, for your listening and looking, viewing pleasure. Um, these, these churches right here are uh, every church that we're going to talk about. And these were these churches where they really were. That's, that's the actual physical presence of those places. And so when we look at them, they all give us futuristic ideas and understanding of where it is that we are going to go and how we're going to move uh, about this. What was the first church's name? Ephesus, praise God, we got it. Y'all give our media team, awesome media team, a hand clap for being able to work expeditiously to get that. Now, when we look at these different churches, we see where Ephesus is, right? Uh, right below Asia to the left. You see that right above my letters? Y'all see it. All right. So you see where that church is. This church was a church that was on fire because they were the original. They were the first, and they, they were actually going through uh, some hard times. This is what the Bible says in Revelations 2, 3 through 5 about it. It says, you have persevered. And you have endured hardships for my name. Now, during that time, this is when they were not only persecuting, but they were killing Christians. Uh, the, the, the killing actually happened to the apostles. And apostles was uh, Jesus' first group of people that he sent through. You remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, all of those, not Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Those are uh, uh, the Gospels. But we're looking at Peter, James, John, those types of guys. These were the apostles. And many of them, all except for um, uh, John, was killed. Peter was hung upside down on the cross because he didn't want to die like Jesus. So we see all of them, they were slain. They were killed. So they killed him. And so this church is really, 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 really strong. And, and uh, they're going forth. And, and this is what, what the Bible says. It says, for my name, you have, been perse uh, per you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. This is the first church. This church forgot how to love. They were so active at doing and making sure that the mission went for them, making sure that the ministry was right and making sure that the culture was set, that they forgot to just spend time with God. He said, you for, how many of y'all have, have ever done that? You've been in a part of God's ministry and work, and you just began to do the work, but you forgot to just sit in the presence of God. So we learned that from the first century church that we have to return to the first love. 
Number two, let's go back to the map again, and I'll, this map will be something that we go because I want you guys to look at uh, this, this group. And so now we're looking at uh, the second church, and the second church is called Smyrna. You see it right above Ephesus. Smyrna is the next church, and this church was persecuted church, and they were impoverished. By, the Bible says, I know your afflictions and your poverty. This is Revelations 2, 9 through 10. He says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. They're, they are going to be in prison. They are broke. They don't have money. But God says, you're rich. He says, I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of a synagogue of Satan. He says, but do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Say 10 days. Tell your kids for 10 days. Say 10 days. They're going to go to prison for 10 days to do what? To test you. And he says, you will suffer persecution, persecution for 10 days. He says, but be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you a life. I'll give you life as your victor's crown. He says that even though they are going to threaten to take your life, he says, I want you to be faithful even unto death, and I'm going to give you the crown of life. This is during the period in time, and this is, anybody ever heard of Constantine? Constantine, this is a little bit of history. Constantine, uh, from the 67 AD, which means there's 67 uh, uh, years that happened after Jesus, Jesus died, 67 AD to 313, we see that Constantine uh, comes through and he changes uh, the dynamic and the parameter of things. And this is the Edict of Milan. Write that down. The Edict of Milan. Kids, if you're in middle school, high school, elementary, you probably never heard this before, but the Edict of Milan. The Edict of Milan was when Constantine came in and said, no longer will the church be persecuted. And he made an edict. And it says, before that time, all of the apostles were martyred and tortured, but Constantine came through and did a great thing. He signed in a declaration that no longer will Christians be persecuted. Let's praise God for that, right? But how many of you know that, that any time church and government get together, there's some things that happen that, that don't necessarily work out for, for the great. So no longer are they persecuted. Now, when you're persecuted, that's when we're with, we with Jesus, baby. We need him. I need the O. I was doing persecution. But when we leave persecution, we start to get into this Say it louder. Comfort. I just want to be comfortable, Jesus. Which leads us to the next church, which is coming up on the map, which is called Pergamum. This church is the compromised church. Uh-oh, is right. Y'all see what Pergamum is at the top? And we're going to work our way down to Laodicea. Pergamum is the compromising church. This, during this time period, this is where they institutionalized religion. What does institutionalize mean? It means that they made religion, now it is a part of the government. It's okay to do it, it's legal, it's now a part of the culture. And Constantine, who was a pagan, at first then took over the church. What happens when you get a pagan pastor? You're going to start getting pagan traditions. And yes, this is where the church took on Easter. This is where the church took on Christmas. This is where the church took on Halloween. This is when the church took on Balaam doctrine. This is where we start to see things that used to happen in the world and used to not happen in church. Now they're mixing the two because guess what? It's no longer illegal to be a Christian. But since the Christians and the world are coming together, let's just keep some of the old things and then mix them with the new things. So at that point, they removed the Sabbath and they moved Sabbath worship to the Sunday. So even on today, we sit in church because of what the pagan pastor put in practice a long time ago. So we've got Balaam doctrine, idolatry. Idolatry for you young kids means that I worship 
idols. I look up to uh, uh, gold chains, or I look up to rappers, or I, I, I worship uh, video games, or I worship Facebook and Instagram or TikTok. I, I, wor I spend my time focusing on these things, and I, I worship them with my time. And so we move from this non-tolerance of the world to now being accepting and tolerant. Not fighting against the ways of the world, now we just are a part of the world. He says in Revelations 2, 13 through 14, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witnesses who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Satan is living where the pagan pastor is in power, and he says, I still know that you didn't even renounce your faith in me. He says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balaam to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. These are times when people are having sex on the pulpit in church. In the back rooms and on stages and on platforms, there are sexual things that are happening in the church. Some people go to Pornhub. No, you could just go to church and get that. So we see that there's a transition that's happening. It only gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. It only gets worse. We go back to the map. We see the fourth church. The fourth church is called Thyatira. Thyatira. Say that when we say Thyatira. This is the corrupt church. Now, I don't mean to step on toes, but I'm just quoting history right now, okay? All right? This is during the Dark Ages from about 500 to 1500 A.D. And the Bible says to the angel of the church in Thyatira, Tyra, write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. At this time, we see that there are no longer the Levitical priesthood, but we see the Catholic Church now in power. And we know that in the Catholic Church, the issue that they have is they have tons of idols, statues. They're praying to different people. They're praying to Mary. They have this Jezebel is now in power. And the Pope comes in and the Pope says, it's easier for me to have control over the Bible than the Bible to have control over me. And now we start to see the Vatican's come in. We start to see the councils come in. And no longer is it the word of God that's leading the people. It's now the Pope. Mary, Queen of Heaven. God never said that she was the Queen of Heaven. But they came in, and, and what they did was they kept the people ignorant because only the Pope and only the people that were leading in worship and leading in, the, in this time in sacrifices could understand what was written in Latin. And so the people were hanging on to the Pope's every word because they could not read it for themselves. And they took advantage of them, and they started to make them think that they could pay their way into heaven. I can pay for my, my great-grandson or I can pay for my grandmother to get out of purgatory and go into heaven. And the money that was taken was built big kingdoms, big buildings. Even if you go over to Rome now, huge monster uh, uh, structures and buildings and things of that sort because this is what they were doing, taking advantage of the people because that woman Jezebel. And now they move from now where we used to be persecuted as, as followers of Christ, now this church is persecuting Muslims and Jews and Christians. There was a Latin blockade for the people, and they, they wanted to make sure that they kept the people ignorant so that they could remain in power. And the Bible talks about people dying by death 
And in this particular century, there was a thing called the Black Plague. This was in 1350. Well, the Black Plague, y'all thought the coronavirus was bad? No, that has nothing on the Black Plague. The Black Plague lasted for years, and it killed millions of people. Not just infected, but it killed you. There was no cure. If you got the Black Plague, your fingers would turn black, they would deteriorate, and you would die. And so the people were dying by death. This is all prophetic. Even over 2,000 years ago, he's telling you this is the stages that the church is going to go through. How many stages? Seven. How many churches? Number five. We go back to the map. Sardis. Somebody say Sardis. Sardis, this is during the Protestant Reformation. Now, for you young kids, I, I want to keep you guys educated. Now, the, the Reformation is uh, uh, done by this guy named Martin Luther. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Martin Luther? Uh, yeah, not Martin Luther the King. Actually, he was named after this guy, but Martin Luther. Martin Luther goes up to the Catholic Church, and he says that you guys are doing this wrong, and he tacks on the door a 95 Thesis. Now, a 95 thesis is 95 actions that the Catholic Church is doing wrong. And he starts a whole nother movement, which is called the Reformation. Say Reformation. And it says this in Revelation 3, 1 through 3. It says, to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. So the church that is, is similarly one step away from the Catholic church is the Lutheran church. Anybody ever been to a Lutheran church before? Now, in the Lutheran church, they have a lot of the same practices as the Catholic church. And what he's saying, he's saying, your heart is in the right place, but you look just like Jezebel's leadership. He said, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, you, are, you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But I, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Between 1500 and 1800, the reputation of being alive but dying, they claimed by faith alone, they claimed that they, they were reading their Bible, they claimed that they had gotten away from the, the Catholicism and the idolatry worship and, and the, the uh, statues and all of those things, and they had good works. And the Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they have no, no power. Sardis, this word, Add this to your vocabulary, means to escape or to come out of. So they came out of the Catholic Church, and now they are in the Reformation. They came out. Sardis means to what? Come out. Number six. I got some good news for y'all. Number six is the Church of Philadelphia. Anybody from Philly? Nobody from Philly in here? Anybody been to Philly? Okay, all right. I was about to say, all right. <laughs> Philadelphia means brotherly love. Tell your kids, say brotherly love. This is the revival missionary age. This is between 1800s and 1950. Anybody was born in the 50s? Yes. So you all actually saw a portion of this age. And you've also seen the church transition and change since then. It says, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. During this time, they had missionaries go out and flood the world. This is during the, the, the age of Charles Spurgeon and, and many of these great, great theologians that all they were doing was praying and preaching, and many people were coming to Christ. They were going through all of Asia. They were going to Africa. They were going to the parts where the gospel had not been delivered, and they were preaching, and they were praying, and many people were, were coming to, to Christ, and, and things were happening, and, and Charles Spurgeon and D.L. Moody and, and these legends that we see in church history, they're opening doors that no man can shut. He says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. 
I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. He says, I will make those who are of the synagogues of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. And during this time, we see a boom in Christianity. And then after the 50s come and we go into the last church of the age. And this church is called the Church of Laodicea. It is the age in which we live now. It is our church. This is going to be a tough one. Because this is the age that we're in now. And I'm glad your kids are in the building because... There is no other church before Jesus comes back. This is it. This is the last one. So what does Yeshua say to us, being the church of Laodicea? How many churches are there? How many time periods? It's not eight. For years they have preached that. Jesus is coming back. Many people have quit their jobs. Many people have walked away. And Jesus didn't come back. But there are no other churches to be represented. So what I'm saying to you right now, whether you're joining us on YouTube, Facebook, in person, take heed to what I'm about to read because it's where we are now. And your spiritual maturity or your spiritual growth is challenged based on what I'm about to say. Revelations 3, 15 through 22, underline it in your Bible, underline it on your phone, because this is a to us. I appreciate what they talked about to Sardis. I appreciate what they talked about in Thyatira. I appreciate what they talked about in Ephesus. But you want God to give you a word? He about to give it to you. You ready? Here it go. Revelations 3, 15 through 22, he says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. This is to you. You say, I'm rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are a wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give them the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the modern church. From the 1900s until today, He has rebuked us because our houses have not been houses of praying worship, but they have been houses of entertainment. They have been houses of social gatherings. They have been houses where we don't call out sin for the fear of political correctness. I remember preaching a sermon and I hit a sin and a person said, why do you keep talking about that sin? Leave that sin alone. The audacity to say, leave that sin alone, is the church that we have entered into. We are like the church of Laodicea. 
He says, we are lukewarm. We're richer than we've ever been. Comfortable more than we've ever been. And we are into entertainment all the while we shop for churches now. We're not led to places of worship. We shop. Oh, I don't like what they have here. I don't like the music here. We somehow thought that church was for us. We somehow thought that when we come to praise and worship, we are supposed to be entertained by the people on stage. The pastor was real dry today. The pastor was not as exciting today. The praise and worship was, ah, we have become critics to what God is for God. We have stepped in the place where we now are speaking and putting our lips on things that are being offered unto God. We have entered into a place where it's not about God, but it's about us. We want to make the church feel like this. It needs to look like this. We want to cater to this. We want to make sure we attract this type of people. And the Bible says, he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Because when you're spiritually hot or cold, but when you're lukewarm, He's spitting you out. We are entertained all day. Some of y'all work behind computers and you steady got Netflix on. When you're riding in your car, you can't sit in silence. You have to be entertained by certain types of music. Even on your way to sleep, you have to have some type of entertainment going on. Your kids now have iPads all day. You're constantly inundating yourself with things and social medias and, and things that are getting so much to the point where you come on Sunday, you can't listen to a long message because you got a short attention span. We're all about lights, camera, and action. And I'm not talking about action for God. I'm talking about entertainment action. We don't preach repentance, but we, re we preach your best life now. We preach six steps to live your best life now. How not to be broke and how to be prosperous. And we don't preach that you need to come out of sin anymore. We don't preach the things of God. We preach the things of you. And so we're catering to the year of her as opposed to catering to him. We are not concerned with holiness but hanging out. We are the richest churches has ever seen but so poor in spirit. We are consumer church and not a Christian church. We are consumed with entertainment all day, Netflix, video games, sports and sports teams, superheroes, magazines, social media, binge watching TV shows, concerts. We worship the culture and we are devoted to the culture and we must have time to watch our shows every day. How was your devotion? I don't know, but I saw the latest on Netflix. Oh, we are wretched and naked is what he said. Even so much to the way that we dress, we used to dress in robes and then we moved to suits and women would be covered from the top to the bottom. Now you can look at what a woman has on and you don't have to imagine anything. Pants are tight, shirt is tight, and men are no better. We're the same thing. We have moved to a place where we are naked. That's not going to be popular. They know, oh, he, he, uh, he talking about, I'm doing what the word of God says. That's why he said we need to go through revelations because there's some stuff that's happening. There's a culture that you have adopted that's not yours. And you better wake up. We have gotten to the point where people say, I don't have to go to church anymore. God loves me just the way that I am. Lies. God didn't say that I had to go to church. He's saying I'm coming back for my church. What are you talking about? He's not coming back just for you. That's why it says we are marked. We're concerned more about individualism than being led by Christ's wisdom. We are in the age of confusion of identity and gender is under attack. Now we don't know whether we're male or female. He says you are wicked, naked, shameful. You're rich, but you're really poor, pitiful, and blind. Blind so much now when the pastor starts speaking about holiness, you check out. When the pastor starts talking about coming out of sin, you, you, you dismiss it. I, oh, the, the, the other part was good, but why did he have to talk about my addictions or my afflictions? Why did he have to talk about my imperfections? I ain't perfect. Then we go on defense. He says, you are pitiful. So much so that we would rather watch Netflix over the Bible. We choose sports over salvation. 
We give awards to worship music. We spend more time at church talking about how we can connect and more about sports and superheroes and magazines and, and what songs came out than we spend speaking about the things of God. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And if I'm off, it's because you want me to be off. But God is saying, we are the last church, y'all. What does that mean? Time is running out. And we don't have time to play church anymore. This is it. Will it be tomorrow? I don't know, but I know that we are in the last days. Because we're in the last era of churches. But this is the one thing, this is the good news. Y'all ready for the good news? You suck, but you ready for the good news? He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. What are the things that are important to God? This is where the gold is. It's your, it's your heart. It's your mind. It's your spirit. It's, it's the heavenly things. It's the, the things that he wants to reward you, not the monetary thing. He said, I don't want you to be looking after the paper. Buy from me gold. Refined by fire. I mean, it's the purest of the purest. It's the word of God. It is the thing that's going to strengthen your spirit and your soul and your heart and your mind so that you can be faithful even in the times of death. You can be faithful. Buy from me. He says, so then you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. And then he says, a salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Salve is salvation. Those whom I love, I rebuke. So even though we naked, pitiful, ratchet, rigid, raggedy, he says, I still love you. And I only rebuke those that I love. I love you. You naked, but I love you. Yo, you showing too much, but I love you. Yeah, you strung out, but I love you. You addicted to entertainment, but I love you. You all the way off in your theology, but I love you. I ain't got to go to church. I still love you. He says nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. So he rebukes us. He rebukes the church. Smoke and lights and mirrors, that's for you. That's not for God. He is not pleased. So he tells us that I rebuke you because I love you. Kids, stand up. Stand up, kids. If they sleep, wake them up. 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 Stand up. Your parents whip you or they talk to you or they they chastise you because they love you. Even when you go down the wrong path, they still love you. And since they love you, they'll never leave you. No mistake. Forsake you. Now, they may kick you out their house, but they still love you. You can say, man, but give, give your parents a hug and say, thank you for loving me. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. There you go. Thank you. If you're at home right now, tell them, thank you for loving me. Thank you for, for loving me in spite of. I know I didn't clean the room, but thank you for loving me. I know I, I took the cell phone. I stole the car, but thank you for loving me. I know I was, I was way off, but thank you for loving me. I threw the house party when y'all went out of town, but thank you for loving me. Yeah, I had to board a girl in my room, and we was doing something we shouldn't have been doing, but thank you for loving me. You were telling me what to do, and I wasn't listening, and I got out there strung out on drugs. I got out there strung out on crack. I was was in places that I shouldn't have been. I had went way away from where I should have been. But thank you for, I wasn't talking about your parents. I was talking about God. God has loved us all. Even through extortion and we've lied and we've done some things and we've walked away and we've turned our back and God is still standing there with his hands stretched wide, with the nails in his hands. And he said, with my blood, we are marked. And because you are marked, I Let's just say that as a church to say, say, God, thank you for loving me. He says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. He says, so be earnest and repent. Repent means to change your mind. It means to, that, that the same way that you came in today, you're going to think about some things and what I'm supposed to do next week before I come into church, and I'm going to change some things up. I know you spend a lot of time thinking, what am I going to wear to church today? Don't do that no more. Grab something that's appropriate. Make sure you're not naked. Make sure that there's no imagination. Make sure that the men and the women are not tempted when you walk into the place. Put that on and come on to church. 
It ain't about being your best dress. It's not about putting it on your Sunday's best. We don't care about that because it's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's the audience of one. It's all about him. And just because he told us, he says, I'm giving you how to be the church even in the midst of this time. Yeah, you was thrown off for some time, but now that you know the truth, I have rebuked you. I am disciplining you. I am refining you. Now you are rich because the wisdom that I'm giving you is now gold. It's some good stuff, y'all. I told you I was going to be good. I told you it was going to be good. I told you it was going to be good. He said, be earnest and repent. He says, here I am. He says, I stand at the door. He says, I knock. He says, I knock. He says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he doesn't say that I'll open the door and say, Hello, he says, I will come in and eat with that person and they will be with me. When, when, when Christ comes to your table and he's eating with you, yeah, it's, I'm excited he's there. But guess what? He's going to look at the wall and say, you know what? It shouldn't be that color. That's not the color that I like. Your, your table shouldn't be set like this because that's not what I like. Your children shouldn't be doing this because that's not what I like. Your life is a little raggedy over here because that's not what I'm like. I thank you that you've allowed me to come in. Now let me do what I do. I am the constructor. I am the consultant. I'm the one that comes in and gives direction. I'm the one that comes in and tells you to rearrange your furniture. I will tell you what to do. Your life is raggedy, but I'm here. I'm coming in to eat with you. I'm coming to sit at your table. And don't worry about the reconstruction. I'm going to pay for it all. Your walls are white, but they should be bloody red. Come on, somebody. He says, I'll come in and eat with that person, and they will eat with me. And then he says to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. He doesn't give this right to anybody else. He says, I love you, and I'm going to give you the privilege and the honor to not only sit at the table with me, but I'm going to let you sit at the throne. He says, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father, on his throne. Y'all remember the song we were singing earlier? Say, victory is mine. Victory belongs to who? Sat down with my father on his throne. He says, if you repent, stop being pitiful. Stop being wretched. Stop being raggedy. Stop worshiping idols. Stop with all of the time that you spend in entertainment. Make sure you go back to your devotion. Just like the first church, go back to your first love. Now that you know that there are some pagan things that we do, allow yourself to be able to think through that and pray through that appropriately so that we're not doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Make sure we're spending our time and being led by God. Making sure that Jesus is sitting at our table in our house. Making sure that our doors are open. Making sure that we're answering the knocking. When he speaks to me, I will listen. When he tells me to move, I will move. When he tells me to forgive, I'll forgive. When he tells me to go, I will go. I won't hesitate. I won't uh, congratulate. I am going to move when he tells me to move because I am being rebuked and refined. And because I am poor in spirit, he's going to make me rich in the kingdom. And then he ends it off like this. He says, whoever has ears, let him hear. You didn't catch nothing today, you don't have the ears. If you're still lost after today, you don't have the ears. But he says, let them that have ears. Let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He's talking to us, y'all. You was waiting to hear from God? You just heard it. That's for us. That's for you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. And when we can say, God, I'll give you my life, I'll give you my children, I'll give you my purpose, I'll give you my occupation, I'll give you my community, I'll give you my state, I'll give you my political vote, I'll give you my rights, I'll give you my cars, I'll give you my wealth, I'll give you everything, we will no longer have to wrestle with whose tithe money it is. If it's your 10% or my 10%, guess what? You're lukewarm, you're pitiful, you're unwretched, you don't know what's going on. He says, I'm trying to give you treasures, not only in heaven, but I'm trying to deposit some spirit spiritual things, but you're so earthly minded that you complaining about some petty stuff. Stop being petty. I'm not coming for petty Christians. I'm coming for soldiers. 
I'm coming for people that will stand up in the midst of persecution and say, I'm standing on the promises of God. To be able to look Lucifer in his face and say, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper because we are marked. I ain't worried about the, uh, the world coming in and tearing the church apart because we are marked. Yeah, you trying to come for my brother and my sister? Don't worry because we are marked. When you can stand up in the middle of a place and say, I don't care what you do, but the people are the marked people stand up and say, we are marked. 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 When we are marked, we know that there's a hedge of protection around us. I don't have to pray for a hedge. Why? Because he's already surrounded me with his angels. We are. Persecution may come, but he says stay faithful even unto death. We are marked. The 1900s, 1800s, to 1950s don't have nothing on what inspiration can do in this season. That if missionaries and taking the word of God to lost generation, if that's what we're supposed to be doing, then guess what? We're going to do it. You know why? Because we are marked. The Bible tells us that there was going to be a season where we will fall victim and, and fall prey to many things of this world. But he told us, and he gave us the antidote. He gave us the answer. He gave us the power. He gave us the answer. It's not complicated. It's not one of those things that you got to go back and seek the Lord. He says, repent and turn from your wicked ways. He says, you're going a pitiful way. I need you to turn around and walk back towards the promises of God. Y'all feel that? Y'all feel it? You feel it? You feel it? The intensity? But do you feel the power? I feel, I feel like there's dynamite in the room. He said, that's the gold I'm trying to give you. That's that I can't sleep at night purpose. Not because I'm wondering about the things of this world. Because I know I've got a mission to complete. I got it. 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 Let those who have ears, let them hear. So I ask you this question. In the last church season, have you given your life to Christ? Are you really marked? Are you a part of the marked generation? Are you a part of the pitiful, wretched, ratchet, and raggedy place in your life? Guys, I woke up this morning. And I was, I was happy, one, because we don't have to set up church anymore. That was, that was, I was happy about that. Pastor Jordan, Pastor that water. But I was also happy. Did you see them three little people right there? They all marked. And if Christ was to come back this morning, I ain't worried about them. Because they are already marked. I marked my children when they came out. We, we prayed over them. They know the word and the will of God. So if they die right now, guess where they going? I thought about my mom and my dad, and I said, if you were to come back today, I know that they are marked, so I'm not worried about my mom and my dad. I thought about my sisters, and I was like, you know what? My sisters are marked, and my grandparents are marked, my cousins and my uncles are marked. And so, God, if you come back today, my family is marked. I was excited. But then this black cloud came over me. And he said, what about your friends? What about the members of my church at Inspiration Church? What about the communities? I say, God, I thank you for these, but we need to pray for those. My heart, it burns for those because I don't know. Every parent I ask you this question, is your family marked? If they marked, I want you to just give God some glory, just wave your hand, just clap God, just say thank you God, my family, my family is marked. Hug your children, hug them, hug them, hug, hug your children because of what you've done, what you've done. As a parent, you have marked your kids, you have given them 
one of the greatest things in life, which is salvation. Hug them. Don't, don't miss this opportunity. I don't miss this. I don't know when the last time you hugged your kids, but don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. But then there's a group that may not necessarily be marked. And there is a hell that's waiting for them. There is torment that's waiting for them. There is tribulation that's waiting for them. That's the part of revelations that's scary. That's for the people that are un- marked it's the last stage of the church y'all this is it it doesn't get any better and it doesn't get any worse but if you can have ears then I pray that you hear I pray that you hear I pray that you hear when a man is about to leave he puts his head on and he leaves the stage. Glory to God. Come on, I said glory to God. Come on, I hold Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, somebody say we are marked. Ah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you that we're marked, Father. Thank you that the family is marked, Father. Thank you that the children are marked, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ma, 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 ma. Right now, if you're, if, you're in this, if you're in this place or you're on live or, or, or you're with us virtual and you don't know if you're marked, if you're hearing us say marked and you say, I don't know what they mean, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are doing yourself a disservice. And so right now, if you're joining us and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's simple as ABC. A, admit that you are a sinner. B, believe that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. And then C, confess that Jesus is Lord. And if that's you today and you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is not a chance, there is not a mishap, a 100% chance the Holy Spirit will be your down payment into the kingdom of heaven. And so if that's you today, we want to thank God that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Is there anybody in this place today that has not received Jesus Christ? Amen. Well, glory to God. Somebody say, we are marked. Come on, we are marked. Amen, amen. I do have two more appeals that, that I'd like to give out. The second appeal is for rededication. We heard Pastor Carlos speak about repentance. And so when we repent, we have the mind and the heart set to say, I see that there are some things that are not in order. I see that I'm going wayward. Father, pull me back. And the beautiful thing about our Father, He's always there with open arms like the prodigal son. He's always there waiting for us to give us a ring and a robe. And so if that's you today and you say, I need to rededicate my life, listen, don't worry about who's on the left of you. Don't worry about who's on the right of you. If that's you, raise your hand. We want to connect with you to make sure that you receive that rededication. And for those who are on live, if that's you, just write rededicate, rededicate, and we'd love to join with you and pray for you in that area. Amen, amen. We see someone, amen, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. They'll come reach out to you right now. Amen. And then here's my third appeal. My third appeal is for church membership. Hey, listen, guys, we heard Pastor Carlos speak about uh, some people forsaken coming together, but we know that we must be together as a church because God is coming back for the church. And so if you're not a part of a church, connection is so important. When coals are hot, they're hot. But once you remove a coal from a burning coals, they become cold. And so we want you to be connected to Inspiration Church. So if that's you, anyone today on virtual or here in service that wants to join church membership, please raise your hand so we can connect with you. If that's you all over the building, amen, glory to God. And then for those who are on virtual, if that's you, just type connect and we'll have someone that will connect with you in that manner. Were well, you blessed by the, word of, by the word of God today? Come on, were well, you blessed by word of God today? Pastor Carlos, thank you for being obedient and listening to what God told you. Well, how many cheerful givers do I have in this place today? Come on, I said, how many cheerful givers do I have in this place today? The Word of God says that God loves a cheerful giver. I want to share a scripture with you today in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16. The scripture says, no man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. 
Each of you must bring a gift in proportion of the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Somebody say, it's not even mine. It's not even mine. Everything that we have is not even ours. And God has given us a commandment to give a tenth of our increase, a tenth of our blessing, and then also to give an offering. And so if that's you today, for them who have ears, as the scriptures say, let him hear and give out of the abundance of your heart. And so right now, if you need an offering envelope, if you could just raise your hand, we'd have someone who can get you those envelopes and they'll get you taken care of. Glory to God, the scripture says, the earth and the fullness is mine, says the Lord. He says, if I was hungry, I would not ask you, for everything is mine. And so we gotta make sure that we're obedient to God. The scripture says in Michael, will a man rob God? And so I know that a lot of us have uncertainties when we begin to give, because the enemy begins to mess with our minds. But today you gotta tell him, I'm marked, man. I'm, I'm rich, not in, the mo not in the monetary, but I'm rich in my faith with pure gold. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do we have our offering envelopes, our, our buckets? Glory to God. I'll go ahead and pray over the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, Father, first of all, we thank you that we should never appear before you empty-handed. Father, we thank you that our hands aren't empty. And so, Father, right now as we give the physical, we thank you that you will impart the spiritual. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the monies that are given, Father, will go to the right missions. They'll go to the right plans. And, Father, we will build and arise. And so, Father, we thank you and praise you for your servant's heart. We thank you and praise you, Father, that we have the heart to listen to your commands and to be obedient. So, Father, because of that, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, listen, guys. We got some very important people in the place today. You may be sitting next to one of them. Today I'm speaking of our first time visitors. Listen, if this is your first time here at Inspiration Church, you've never been here today, could you please stand up for, excuse me, just hold your hand up. You don't have to stand. Okay, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Come on, glow, glory to God. Increase, increase, increase. Well, glory to God, listen to each and every one of you. We want to tell you thank you, thank you for joining us here today. Hey, listen, we hope that you were blessed by our services, and we hope that you join us back again here next week at the same time. Um, I, I want to speak to one of our visitors. Mr. Montrell, stand up for us. Mr. Montrell, this is his first time with us today. And Mr. Montrell has already joined the prison ministry already joined the prison ministry and so he'll be helping us with that we'll, we're going to give him someone to look over and so we thank you for your faithfulness man and thank you for joining us in this place today to all our first time visitors we love you and it's absolutely nothing you can do about it if you want to do something about it just love us back just love us back amen amen make sure that you show them some love make sure that you show them uh, how we love live and lead as you uh go about your day and you leave this place guys i have a few announcements for you today number one our community pass out say community pass out community pass out and you'll see the flyer that'll pop here shortly our community pass out october 30th we will be joining forces and joining hands with bethel's heavenly hands and we will go out into the community and pass out and distribute food to those who are elders and those who are our senior citizens amen come on god tells us to make sure that we look after those we can never forget those that's very important so we'd love for you to join us october 30th we'll be there at 8 a.m and then we will be leaving at 10 a.m. Amen. Just two hours. Just two hours to bless somebody's life. Glory to God. And then I want you guys to join us. Somebody say, get fit. I want you guys to join us for our boot camp, Inspiration Church's first boot camp. We will have our boot camp on November the 21st. We will meet at Tom Bass Park. We'll have our trainer out there. Coach Ty will have some music. And then also we will start a fitness tracker where we will see how many miles you are walking and how many steps you are taking so that we can make sure that we get to our health goals. Come on, how many people know that this vessel is not our own? It's the Lord's, and so we got to make sure that we do and be good stewards of what God has given us. So make sure that you mark your calendars for all these things. Please join us for the pass out and join us for the fitness boot camp. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I want to also share with you guys some things that me and Pastor Carlos are doing behind scenes. We are starting a podcast. Somebody say, screw it. 
Screw It is the podcast that we are starting. If you have not had a chance to purchase Pastor Carlo's book, please purchase this book. I promise you it will bless your life. It was the number one seller on Amazon, so please make sure that you get that book. Screw It. It will bless your life for any young man or, or any man in here who has ever dealt with any pornographic addiction. Pastor Carlos talks about these things, and any man who, who's in here who's ever dealt with any relationship issues, your girlfriend, your wife, uh, uh, maybe had, had multiple girlfriends or whatever it is, Pastor Carlos touched on all these things, and I guarantee it to bless your life. So make sure that you get that book. But we are starting a podcast called Screw It, and it's amazing. Pastor Carlos, we're on our, what, sixth, seventh episode? Man, listen, it will bless your life. So as soon as we get all that information out, we want you all to join that podcast. Amen? Amen. We also have prayer requests prayer request. If you see our Connect Center in the back, everyone look at our Connect Center at the back. We have prayer requests. We'd love for you to fill out a prayer request sheet. Maybe you have a special prayer that you want want to uh, want us to pray over. We have a prayer team. We have prayer warriors that take those prayer requests and we pray over those things. And so if you want to keep your name anonymous, that's fine. And if you want to put your name on there, that's fine. But we just want to make sure that you pray for it. And so that's very important that we do that. So if you need a prayer request, just raise your hand and we'll get someone uh, to get that to you. And if not, if you don't want to raise your hand, you can just meet us at the Connect Center. Amen? Amen. This week we will have our Bible study on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Guys, we are in service. We had our last Bible study here uh, at 7 p.m. It was amazing. So please mark your calendars calendars to make sure that you join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then mark your calendars every Tuesday at 7 a.m. to join Pastor Carlos for our morning prayer. Amen. Are y'all done? Y'all ready for, for uh, to, to end? I know that was a lot of announcements, right? Well, I got one more for you. Church merch. Please make sure that as you leave this place, you check out some of our church merch. Everybody stand up. Let us get ready to leave the place. Amen. Okay, glory to God, glory to God. We do need some people to uh, to join our Connect team. So if you want to join our Connect team, please make sure that you sign up at the Connect Center. We also need a prayer team. We want people to join our prayer warriors where we can go out, we can pray for people and also pray over those requests. So if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart and you want to connect, be on the Connect team or be on the prayer team, please fill it out at the Connect Center. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you that we are marked. Father, we thank you and praise you for the word that was given today. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that just as that seventh church that we're in right now, Father, we don't, we don't want to be lukewarm so that you'll spit us out. So, Father, help us to be in right standing with you, the very righteousness of God in everything that we do. Father, we thank you and we praise you for today. Father, we thank you and praise you that as we get in our cars, I pray that you would keep angels around the cars, on top of the cars, on side the cars, and protect us to get from point A to point B. And then, Father, when we return to our destination, I pray that everything is in order how we left it. Father, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is my prayer for you. I pray that your struggles keep you near the cross. I pray that your troubles show you you need God. I pray that all your battles in the way that they should, and even on your bad days, it still proves that God is good. Can you receive the blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Hey, listen, guys, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Go in the blessing of the Lord and always remember to love, live, live.